I'm going to start quick with a little recap. So uh, our confirmation program here at Bethesda Covenant Church is The Journey. It's uh, put out by the Covenant Church. Uh, some dear friends of mine were involved in the compiling of this. It took them about five years uh, to thoughtfully put this program together. Uh, from what I understand from those who have been through the previous confirmation materials, this is a huge improvement. Uh, this is the only one I've ever taught, and I can say that uh, over Catholic confirmation, it is uh, pretty exciting. <laughs> Uh, so uh, this binder takes us through uh, all of the Old Testament in one year and all of the New Testament in one year. Um, and uh, that's pretty standard as far as confirmation goes. I think the things that set ours apart are these things called covenant experiences. And um, I'll talk to you more about this later in the morning. But we um, include camps, missions, trips, things like Chick. If you don't know what Chick is, you're going to hear all about it because we have to fundraise a lot of money to send our kids there. So don't worry, you'll hear more about that later. Um, so the covenant experiences, but also the mentor um, aspect of this. So traditionally, confirmation has just been students coming on Saturday mornings um, and going through workbooks with the senior pastor. Uh, our program instead has these experiences, and we also have mentors. So each student chooses a mentor from uh, the membership of the congregation. And then the, this is a lifelong friendship uh, that begins very purposefully. So these mentors have taught confirmation classes with these kids. They've been on these experiences with the kids. Um, it really helps the students, I think, to feel that they are now... Um, a part of the congregation. This isn't the church that they come to. It's the church that they're a part of. Um, and so I asked uh, the mentors and the students to just share with you quick uh, one memory or, um, th or, or event that was really meaningful to them over the past two years. Good morning. I'm Mark Joy. For those who don't know who I am already, <clears throat> I was Dylan's mentor during the confirmation classes. Um, <clears throat> Matt and myself would lead the boys on family nights in their lessons for the last three years now. Three years? No. Uh, well, three years ago, next oh, month, we started years. this yeah. thing. Yeah, it was two years of confirmation, yeah. three years ago. Great. So um, first off, I would like to just say um, thank you to Dylan and Aiden for being themselves throughout the entire thing and uh, making it very easy to be a mentor to both of them. Um, both of these guys have a great knowledge of the Bible and in that and awesome love for God. Um, there are tons of great memories that I walked away with from this experience that I got to share with Matt, Dylan, and Aiden um, from simply being able to sit down and just read God's word um, with them as a group, um, seeing which, which one of us would come the closest in pronouncing the names of the people in the Old Testament correctly. And uh, we sometimes it's would have, it's <laughs> yeah, um, we sometimes would have uh, almost play-like reading assignments where we would each choose characters during our lessons, and that is when we got to hear the amazing voices that Aiden Tack would make up for these characters. And uh, then there was Dylan Holmes and I, um, who for about the first ten minutes of the group would be chomping away on all the cookies that we snuck in from the dessert tray That's from dinner nice. without Sherry or Heather catching us. Um, sorry, Kelly. <laughs> um, so to the times that uh, all of us would just go deep into thought on our individual readings and then discuss what we were all reading together as a group. Um, then from that, getting to listen to the two young men explain their verses to us with understanding, excitement, and conviction. Um, the most of the time during that, I would go off subject and start talking about something totally different in a totally different Bible study on totally different verses. <laughs> and then Matt would eventually get me back focused on the group and keep us moving forward in the lesson that we were on. Um, thank you, Matt. Um, but with all of the funny games behind, these guys are no doubt two of the smartest, kindest, and caring young men I've ever met or spoke with. And I feel that throughout this whole experience, we all being the four of us, became a lot closer as friends, as well as becoming more devoted um, Christians in our reading of scripture, praying, and our personal devotionals. They both show a lot of dedication in learning about our Lord and Savior, along with the history of the Bible. Um, I feel privileged and honored to be able to watch these two young men learn about and love Jesus Christ the way that these guys do. Um, this dedication and love for God that they show um, lets me know that the future of our church is in pretty good hands. So I would like to thank both of you and for your hard work and dedication. Also, congratulate both of you. And I'm very proud to call you both friends. 
um, peers and brothers in Christ, and I look forward to standing beside you and watching you um, both grow even more in your faith as Christians in our church. Yeah, amen. Mark was so nervous, he told me he was going to have 30 seconds of words to say, and then he'd be out. <laughs> So confirmation was a very meaningful time for me. Um, first off, I want to thank Anthony, Matt, and Mark for helping me to experience this, and Aiden for being there with me through this. And then I'd also like to thank Anthony for putting up with me on our trips to, like, New Orleans and stuff. Uh, I got Colby coming up in the next couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> And then, like, my most meaningful experience, we went up to One Life, which is up in the UP of Michigan. And when I got there, I realized that the life I was living was not the life God wanted me to live and I wanted to live. So, I, but, like, at that moment, I didn't really want to tell people about it. So, but recently, in, like, three months ago, I told people, and it was really meaningful for me when Anthony and Aiden came to me and started praying for me right there. I want to say thank you for that, and I have noticed a huge change in my life since then, and that's it. Okay. Thank you. He's going to log in. No. Okay. okay. I did a sort of summary of my confirmation in the past two years. So I've been going for this church for now over like 10 years, and I have so many great memories. Me? No. There you go. There you go. I have no idea what's in this future for this kid, but I got an idea. <laughs> Okay, so I have had so many memories throughout the 10 years I've been in this church. Um, there's been so many trips, so many uh, picnics, so many camps, and I started confirmation when I was in seventh grade with these young, um, awesome people. So um, in our first year in confirmation, I was a little nervous and sort of like, freakish about like having like another class than school um so I thought it was gonna be a lot easier and a lot like more chill than what school was and I was right about it being more chill but it was a little more serious and a little more um in depth so on our first day in confirmation I was we me and Dylan went to um uh, Anthony's youth house to start our confirmation and in that day I still remember that we had to name all the books of the Bible in order, and whoever would name all the books in the Bible first would have to go to McDonald's and pick what um, the other person wanted to eat if um, for the loser. So, and Dylan was going to give me just a bun and cheese because I don't like cheese. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> After that, um, we had um, family night, and we had Matt and Mark for our um, mentors that day. I chose Matt, and Dylan chose Mark. We were fighting over Mark, but I was like, well, Matt's still a good guy. <laughs> so, um, you were a solid second, Mark. Solid. Like, just barely low. <laughs> okay. So, oh, like, we knew Mark really well. We would always hang out with oh, him in kid church there. and stuff. We didn't know Matt that well, but later on, we were, like, Best buds. So, Turn out all right. <laughs> so for the first class, we <laughs> stop your grandpa. <laughs> so in our first class, I um, Matt was mentoring me and Mark was mentoring Dylan, and it sort of was just like sort of like a separation between the two of us. Um, some of the really hilarious moments in our first year was. Um, in our sessions where we would have to like um, uh, play like a game or something, it said get into groups of like three people or more, and we're like, 
because we only had two people. So <laughs> we would try to make the best of it. Um, the other really funny moment was um, we would have to read Bible names, and the two Bible names that we like sort of like came up and like stuck with us was um, Jeroboam and uh, Barack Obama. We don't <laughs> remember who those people are. Jeroboam and Rehoboam. Okay, yeah. Um, so those are two people. I wasn't that... in that session. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So and the number three funny moment was. Um, Whenever Mark or Matt was gone, we would always have this little lamb called Mr. Lambsky to take the place of whoever whoever it was. So it was just like a little stuffed animal for like Matt when he was not not there. <laughs> and then he disappeared in the second year, so we don't know where he where he is now. Um, <laughs> ascended. He ascended. Yeah. <laughs> Matt disappeared in the second year. Okay. So. Okay. So one of the really hard-hitting moments that really changed my life was when we went to uh, Covenant Point up in the UP. Um, there was one place there called the prayer room. And the prayer room was a little sketchy at first. I was like, well, this looks like this place is going to be really cold and, like, freezing inside. So we opened the doors, and everything changed. Like, it got a lot more quieter, and it was really, like, calm. In the rooms, there are stations that allow you to make confessions to God, to pray to God, and to talk to Him about your sins. Each station really hit me emotionally and physically. I was finally able to talk to God and get things straight with Him. With my group also getting hit emotionally with the stations, it made my connection with others even better. Throughout that day, we were able to really connect to God and realize um, why we should talk to him and be with him more. So that was one of the really hard-hitting moments in my first year. So in my second year, I was actually able to start a devotional because all the other times I would always get a devotional, read like three or four days, and then just put it down because it's not a habit. But this year I was able to start and continue a devotional, which really I feel like the first um, time I was in the prayer room really impacted me on that part. So the second year as well was really more like calm and we missed Mr. Lansky a lot. Um, Anthony really became a person I was really chill with or really serious with. Uh, D Dylan became one of my best friends with the most inside jokes. Um, even though confirmation is over, I was still forever remember that I would always have someone to talk to for the rest of my life. And as well, Matt and Mark I didn't feel like they were our mentors anymore. I felt like they were, like, my quote-unquote brothers. Like, didn't, Matt didn't feel like he was my mentor. Mark didn't feel like it was Dylan's mentor anymore. They felt like they were both my mentors. They felt like we were a part of a family. Thank you all for your love and support. Yeah, good luck following that. Yeah. Well... Well, I learned something new today. I didn't know. Uh, I didn't know Mark was the number one pick. So. <laughs> um, but but it's true that I I didn't really know either of these guys at the, the beginning of this process uh, three years ago. And as I was thinking about that, um, th thinking about the last three years, um, that was one of the things that stuck out in my mind was uh, that first thing we did outside of, of the class. So, so we tried to do some things outside of confirmation class with these guys. And so the first thing we did was we went to dinner with them. And I have never seen, and th this was three years ago, they were about this tall. Yeah. And I've never, I would have never imagined how much they could eat. Um, <laughs> And I think I think we spent more than more that night than I normally do on my wife for a nice dinner. So, um, so so that's that's a, a memory of mine. Um, but it really has been great to see how Dylan and Aiden have gotten to know each other and have gotten to know us. And, and as they've gotten to know each other, we've really seen their personalities come out, and um, it's just made class even more fun. Um, I, I don't really have one specific memory from class, um, 
but what I, what I really enjoyed was, um, I, I don't know if they realized how much Mark and I learned from going through this material with them and how much we learned from Aiden and Dylan. Um, they just had some great questions sometimes that really made us think, and sometimes we had to defer those to Anthony, but um, it, it really was rewarding to watch them grow through this process and get to know each other. And I know Mark and I have really grown a lot through this too, and you guys probably didn't realize how much we were learning from you through this whole process. So I just wanna say congratulations to you guys, and Mark and I are here for you if you ever need us, and we're excited to continue to watch you grow. Well, our next confirmation class is six kids, so I'm going to need some more mentors next time around. So while, while you got to hear these touching testimonies, be thinking. Uh, I have both, uh, we have both boys and girls for our next confirmation class. So if uh, you heard these testimonies and you thought, you know what, confirmation mentor sounds like a really meaningful way for me to um, give here at Bethesda, just let me know. You guys can have a seat. Thank you guys. What amazing, right, to be a part of that. Please bow your heads with me. Dear God, we thank you today for this beautiful day you have given us. Thank you for the incredible privilege we have each week of gathering as one family in your holy presence. Thank you that each Sunday you, you call us into dialogue with you. You speak words of life to us, and we respond in praise, gratitude, and obedience. Let us be renewed in Christ this and every day as we worship you, that we may live lives that please you in every way, and that the light of Christ may shine even more brightly in our homes workplaces, community, and anywhere in the world you may send us. Thank you for another opportunity to serve you through Alley Walk this year. What a beautiful day you gave us, and we thank you for all the lives you touched again this year. We thank you for every person who made it possible. There are countless hours and energy spent every year to make this possible, and we know you are with us the entire time. Thank you for another successful year. We ask now that you watch over the people of Florida. We are about to witness your awesome power once again, and we know many lives will be disrupted. We ask that you keep people safe first and foremost. As the storm passes, there will be a tremendous amount of property loss. As people start to put their lives back together, we ask that you encourage them during this long process. Throughout this storm and the rebuilding, we ask that you once again show us how your people can respond in such a positive way when we come together and help our neighbors. Please bless this time we have together and thank you for the opportunity we have to worship you together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. <coughs> this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen So I shared a few points from my sermon this morning with the other four that you saw up here. I think they hit them all uh, between the four of them, so don't stop me if you've heard this one before. <laughs> Three years ago, uh, next month, we started confirmation class at the youth house. The first confirmation class with a new class is, as always, awkward. Uh, Dylan and Aiden and I knew of each other. We didn't really know 
each other. So we sat in upstairs in the youth house with some very loud crickets for a little while. <laughs> and uh, so I had a plan. I said, you know, I thought, thinking about it, I was like, what am I gonna, how am I going to do confirmation with just two kids? How are we going to do this? And so I kind of came up with a new game plan. And for the first uh, session, uh, I think uh, Aiden or Dylan talked about it a little bit. We were going to put the books of the Bible in order. Genesis to Revelation, and it was sort of a competition between the two of them who could put the most in order. And uh, not because I thought the first confirmation class they'd be able to put all the books of the Bible in order or anything. I just wanted us to have something that we could celebrate, like a progression, you know, every couple of months. Maybe they know as we were talking our way through the Bible. Maybe they know where a few more books went, and it would be sort of a, 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 a landmark or stepping stones along the way. Sounds good, right? At this point, I had 11 years of youth ministry under my belt. No red flags went off that this would be a bad idea. <laughs> it was a very bad idea. Uh, so um, it turns out that um, Dylan had been going to Christian school. So putting books of the Bible in order was kind of was homework that he had done uh, several times. That, combined with a genetic predisposition for being a genius, seriously, these Holmes kids are crazy smart. <laughs> and uh, so, so that together meant that um, he was able to put about 95% of the books of the Bible in the right order in about five minutes. I timed myself earlier that day. I tried it. It took me 20 minutes, and I made some mistakes. Um, so, uh, yeah, it was pretty impressive. Aiden, on the other hand, had Genesis and Revelation firmly locked down. <laughs> like, Aiden knew exactly where those went. And he had, like, a vague idea that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John kind of went together. He thought maybe he had heard once. Uh, now... <laughs> Now, uh, the Tack family, Aiden's family, sits here in the front. We actually pushed them back our row this morning. Uh, they sit here in the front and have of this church and have for the last 12 years. They sit there because 12 years ago, little Aiden Tack wanted to sit in the front row the first Sunday they came and visited Bethesda. Aiden has been in Coming to Christmas, the musical. His picture is on the All Day Adventures promotional materials that we use in the summer. He knows all the words to the papaya song. Okay, Aiden is a Bethesda kid, as much as anyone could ever be a Bethesda kid. But I managed, as his pastor of the first confirmation class, to make him feel completely inadequate because he couldn't memorize a table of contents. <sighs> Solid move, Anthony. Solid move. As you might have heard, things didn't really begin to shape up in confirmation until they started going to Covenant. We started going to Covenant Point. We do every winter uh, to a retreat called One Life. Um, part of our, another part of our confirmation materials that I just touched on briefly is this journal. Um, it's a daily journal. It's got uh, Bible verses that we're talking about in class and some reflection questions that they can go through every day to just sort of keep them on, keep them on track. Um, but more importantly, to develop in them a devotional habit. Uh, they didn't know that secretly that was primarily what I was trying to instill in them in these journals. Um, and they'd been doing pretty good up until we went to camp with the journals. They, they, did, a, they did okay. And um, they were both definitely benefiting from their relationships with their mentors. Early on, it became very clear that this mentor program was really working out. Um, while we were at camp, though, as you guys heard, these guys both had really meaningful spiritual experiences. Uh, Dylan, if you don't know Dylan, he, he's kind of a stoic guy. I mean, it's certainly as far as teenagers go, he's incredibly stoic. Um, and this was the first time I'd ever seen his facade crack a little. He let it, he let it show. He let his heart show uh, while we were at camp. Like he, we saw tangibly in his face that God was doing something in his life. And I think he began to understand for the first time that having all of the right answers about God, while very good and very useful, is not where salvation is found. Uh, Aiden made this, uh, had the realization that, um, that there was a real connection 
between this God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that we were talking about in confirmation and his, uh, and his journal and then the daily activities of his life. His life was different uh, because he was interacting with this God that we were reading about. By the time we finished year one, the entire Old Testament was out of the way. Um, I think they both had a clear understanding uh, who this God of the Old Testament was. And I know somewhat there was some surprise that he wasn't actually this genocidal megalomaniac that sometimes culture wants to paint our God in, in, as he's portrayed in the Old Testament as. Uh, we saw how God covered the sins of Adam and Eve. We saw how he rescued the poor and the oppressed from the very beginning. How he gave Pharaoh all those chances to do the right thing. How he cared for the Israelites as they wandered through the desert. How he gave the law to his people, not to confine them, but to set them free from the slavery of this cultic culture that they were a part of. We read how he rescued his prophets from both beasts and fire. We read the poetry of David, and we felt the longing of the prophets as the whole Old Testament world seemed to be crying out for this promised Messiah. After working so hard for that first year, and I know we talk about how fun confirmation is, but it is also a lot of work. You guys put on a lot of hours. Um, they went off to Covenant Harbor that summer. Uh, for a week. It, and it was a much deserved week of fun, uh, but also for s the spiritual development aspect. Uh, both returned home excited about their faith, and I think with a little better understanding of what this thing called the Covenant Church is. Uh, when you go to camp, you get this sense that this thing is bigger, and it's, uh, it's covering not only our continent, but it's covering the world, that our church, that our denomination makes a difference globally. Um, and, of course, uh, then begins our second year of confirmation, which is always more fun. We're studying the New Testament, which is a little easier to digest. The names are a little easier to pronounce. Oh, what was Jeroboam? <laughs> right, of course, thank you. I'll be sure to take that to my next theology class. I appreciate it. Uh, so we're focusing on the New Testament, but especially the words of Jesus. There's a real emphasis on the words of Jesus in our curriculum. Um, and after a year of meeting together weekly at confirmation class, being here at church together, going on retreats and camps, we were thick as thieves. There was no bodily function we couldn't talk about. We were a group of men together uh, seeking out the scriptures, seeking out God. And uh, <laughs> yeah. Some of us did better than others, um, maintaining our daily devotional, getting those things done each and every week, but no judgment. There's no judgment there, just uh, uplifting and supporting each other. Um, the five of us, mentors and students, spent the year really getting to know how the words of Jesus and the teaching of the disciples work itself tangibly into the everyday in and outs of our lives. When one of us would miss a week in our, journal, in our devotional journal, it was clear when you'd come to class that you didn't just miss the homework. Uh, you missed something that is going to be meaningful for your life. Um, you, it was important to go back and get that and understand whatever it was that you missed. There's not a whole lot of memorization in the new um, confirmation curriculum. Uh, does anyone remember sword drills? Was that ever a part of church? Yeah, okay, sword drills? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there, there aren't any sword drills. Sword drills is where you quickly have to find a verse in the Bible and, and read it. It's the sword of the word. Don't worry about it. I didn't even teach that, Matt. It's okay. Um, there's not, also not a lot of busy work uh, in these books anymore, uh, which I greatly appreciate. What there is is these experiences, Covenant Point, Covenant Harbor, missions trips, a, a Christian concert, um, a way, and then a way of studying scripture systematically that takes the Bible and makes it not a collection of individual verses, but an overarching story of God's interaction with humanity. 
it, it begins within the beginning, and now it includes Dylan and Aiden and you and me. I have no idea if Dylan can lay out those books of the Bible any faster after confirmation class. I have no idea how many more books of the Bible now Aiden could put in order. I'm guessing it's a lot more. But we didn't go back to that for obvious reasons. But what I can tell you is that Dylan knows that knowledge of the Bible is good and important, but it is not salvation. It is not what saves him from the consequences of his sin. I know that Dylan feels the pull of the Holy Spirit. He, I know, I can see it in him that he is aware that the Holy Spirit is calling him to trust and obey, to taste and see that God is good. I know that Aiden has the deepest personal devotional life of any high school freshman I have ever had the honor to teach. I know that Aiden knows what he believes and why he believes it, and it isn't because his parents said, this is what we believe, and this is why we believe it. I have one goal for our confirmands of this church, and it is that they will take the faith of their families, they will dig deep, and choose it for themselves. I have no idea what the future holds for these two young men, but I know that they know that they can call on the name of the Lord in times of plenty and in times of want. I know that they know that only through relationship, through the relationship that we develop with God, can we experience the true joy that comes with serving our fellow man. I know that they know that their lives have meaning, significance, and purpose because they were created in God's image, and that through all of life's experiences, the good ones and the bad ones, they are being formed more perfectly into that image that God created them to be. And I know that they know that they have a family here at Bethesda Covenant Church. No matter where life takes you, fellas, remember, you can always come home. So how about you? What do you know that you know? What is the confirmation of your faith? What are your confirmations? We're going to try one of these sword drills right now. There's a little black book down by your shins. It's called the Bible. You got it. Way to be. This guy's fast. Dylan, it sounds like there's a race on. We're going to 1 Kings. It's okay if you have to look in the table of contents. I promise it's fine. <laughs> We're going 1 Kings chapter 19. If there are children next to you, if you can help them, uh, help, helping them see that there is a table of contents in their Bible is a great start for helping kids, by the way. That's where we always start in kid church, is with the table of contents in our Bibles. 1 Kings 19, verses 11 through 13. That's 1 Kings 19, verses 11 through 13. And because there are men in the room, I'm going to give it to you one more time. 1 Kings 19. 11 through 13. Groan. I'm one of you. I know the truth. <laughs> I don't need my wife to tell me things three times. All right, here we go. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small and it was so, when Elijah heard it, and he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out, and stood in the entering of the cave, and behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What dost thou hear, Elijah? 
My friend Jeff Linforce has me reading the King James lately. I gotta say, I love what dost thou hear, Elijah. <laughs> There's something beautiful about that, isn't there? Why, what are you doing here, he says. God says, what, what are you doing here, Elijah? Why are you standing here? Why are you looking out at fires and earthquakes and winds? What do you want? It's the same question I got to ask you this morning. What, what are you doing here? What do you want? God's asking you. What are you doing? What do you want? Some of us are waiting for God to rent the mountains with wind and earthquakes and fire. Some people go through life looking for these signs. Some people, everything in life is a sign. God, are you for me? Then let me get a good parking spot at Target. Some of you are laughing because it's a little too close to home. <laughs> God, if you are good, then let my teenager want to hang out with his family or her family instead of those bad influences. God, if your promises are true, let me get that promotion. God, if you love me, show me a sign. But the Lord was not in the wind, the earthquake. Or the fire. God is equally on his throne, no matter your circumstances. Whether or not you park in the front row or the back at Target, God is on his throne. Sometimes, often even, teenagers make terrible life choices. If you think back, so did you. Tim, how's life? Shirley Hacker, did Tim always make positive life choices as a teenager? <laughs> Your laugh tells me enough. We're good. <laughs> I got you. I didn't either. All right? God is not causing your child to rebel, and he may not forcefully come down and turn their head the right direction. But he will certainly consecrate that rebellion using it to form your child into the man or woman that he created them to be. Despite what any prosperity gospel teacher tells you, you can be devout, faithful, and in God's will, and not get that promotion. You might not get anything that you want materially in this life. It is not a sign of your lack or built-upness of faith, okay? It is called life. And God has been using its disappointments and its regrets as refining fire for his children for as long as there have been his children, and he's not going to stop with you. Following Jesus inevitably leads to the cross. You do not need a sign of God's love. You have his word. Seek him there. Don't look for signs, but listen for the still, small voice. And he promises, God promises, that you will find him there. People have been telling me for years that there is no way to, re to reach this next generation. I've heard doom, doom and gloom about millennials and their entitlement and the coming death of the church. And I would say that if it were up to you and me, I would agree completely. If it was our power and our spirit that moved forward and brought about salvation, I would agree. But the truth is, the same Holy Spirit that has been working and powerful since the beginning, the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, is alive and well today. We have evidence that the Holy this morning... That the Holy Spirit is doing just fine in the next generation. Thank you very much. God is on his throne, and he is powerful. He will remain on his throne, and he will remain powerful. God is good. And all the time, the difference between Aiden and Dylan and their peers that don't know Jesus is you, all of you. It is us. Parents who faithfully pray for their children, who wake them up for church despite arguments and eye rolls. 
mentors who teach, model, and humbly lead, a congregation that asks questions, listens, and prays with vigor, staff that uplifts and creates experiences and devotional opportunities. The next generation is clearly available to the work of the Holy Spirit. I can't believe that surprises some. All it takes is all it's ever taken. It's the Holy Spirit and a congregation to raise up the next generation. This morning is a celebration of the fact that we come together as God's people. When we come together as God's people. Submit our will to his and seek him in his word and in prayer that he comes through every single time. He does the impossible. He moves the hearts of people, even teenage boys. I know that I know that we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. Amen. <clears throat> You guys are going to stand right here and face me this time. Uh, so when you guys were baptized a few years ago, the, your parents and the congregation made some promises on how they would raise you, and they answered some questions, um, just asking about their intent on how they would raise you uh, in the faith. I have those questions again, but they're reworded to be personal. Now it's you. You are men. In this church now, and uh, I'm going to ask you these questions. As your pastor and teacher, it's my prayer that these expressions of faith will provide the basis for the commitment of your life to Jesus Christ as your Savior and as your Lord. Answering only for yourself, and in perfect freedom to just be silent if you can't answer yes, I now call upon you to respond to the following questions Do you confess personal faith in Jesus Christ? and desire, with God's help, to be his disciple. Yes. Do you believe, with the Church of Jesus Christ, that the Bible, the Old and New Testament, is the Word of God, telling the story of God and God's people in the past, and guiding them today? Yes. As you continue in your life, do you intend to keep worshiping in Christ's Church, listening to his words, and responding to his call according to your faith? Maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. And in heavens, the third day, he rose again, and he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, who for the will of the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the forgiveness of saints, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We're going to go ahead and sing How Great Thou Art. Um, when I put the order of service together, may I ask both the boys, what is a song that means something to you? And Dylan says, how great thou art. I said, all right, I will put that in there for you. So please stand with us as we sing the song um, that touches our souls. Amen. Amen. We got some uh, Bibles and some uh, other gifts for the compromise. We're going to have a, like a, a private time of prayer of family, friends, and mentors right here up front after service. But would you stay standing, please, for the benediction. Now to the one who can keep you from falling and set you in the presence of his glory, jubilant and above reproach, to the only God our Savior be the glory and majesty, might and authority, through Jesus Christ our Lord before all time, now and forevermore. Amen.